sometimes you can't describe things. Sometimes. You don't find in the world lots of this anymore. It's untouched. We need to use this to show people. The moment they arrive to this place, they will feel it the same as we do. Ponte do Ouro Cozibay is the first marine transfrontier conservation area in Africa. The transfrontier marine parks are a very exciting concept, particularly in the marine environment. Um, all your populations of animals and fish, birds, reptiles are transfrontier. And now we've got a chance to actually protect them on both sides of the border. Pontador partial marine reserve is very important for turtles, mainly for two species that uh, nest here, uh, loggerheads and leatherbacks. The loggerhead is endangered. At the moment, the leatherback is critically endangered. And the turtles uh, in South Africa are the same turtles that nest in southern Mozambique. We found that uh, this is the only place where especially the leatherbacks lay the eggs. We are now cooperating together to manage what is effectively the, the one population of turtles. If you draw a line through a country, you cut an ecosystem in half. So now by having transfrontier terrestrial and marine areas, we're actually managing ecosystems uh, as a unit, the way they must be. You can't do conservation if the local community is not part of it. The Transfrontier Conservation Area includes the people in it. The ownership of this project has to be communities. At the moment we've got 63 local monitors covering the entire coast. The, the turtles are bringing in much more benefit and revenue to the communities here than they could ever possibly get by killing the turtles and eating the meat. It's absolutely critical that you get the communities on your side. This empowerment of communities in a project like that actually is the vision of Peace Parks. To use conservation as a change agent. Ecotourism can play a very important role in this area. We should promote subtle guides, walks. Not only for, to get uh, the funds to keep the monitoring program alive, but actually to share with, uh, with people. I haven't yet to see a tourist who's been in a turtle tour successfully who's not been totally awestruck by the experience. These resources here belong to the world. Isimangaliso is a world heritage site and we're also assisting people in southern Mozambique to try and get the same status for the land there. Southern Mozambique becoming a World Heritage Site will really be good in that it'll bring in mechanisms which will ensure that when development goes ahead, it can go ahead in an eco-friendly way. This project is not about stop development. It's just, we're talking sustainable development. It's essential to protect this coastline. Only in 30 years' time, we're going to have these etchings that we're trying to protect now uh, to come back and nest on these same areas. It's going to take 30 years for your initial protection to result in increased numbers. People say 1 to 2 percent of the turtles that actually hatch and go into the ocean grow to maturity. thousands of hatchlings each year uh, successfully entering the water. 
but then as they enter the water it's crystal clear, there's very little cover. There's predators, there's kingfishes, there's sharks, there's all sorts of things, there's birds, there's crabs. Most of them will be killed, uh, but some do survive. And the good news is that in South Africa and southern Mozambique at the moment, we're actually making good progress towards protecting these animals. Numbers are increasing. This Transfrontier initiative gives us the opportunity to have an example now in Africa where two countries are cooperating together to mutually improve the, uh, the management of fish resources is fantastic. It's a huge responsibility we've got to ensure that our children and our children's children can see this happening. So I hope in the future that we can say that uh, we made a difference.